This is Smart Pizza, and in today's hour-long episode, I'll show you the rarest animals in the world. You'll see the rarest reptiles – lions, wolves, and birds. Learn about incredible births of mutant animals, learn about the return of species thought to be long extinct, as well as see some robotic animals that help rescuers and sick people. Let's start with the rarest reptiles. Let's go. San Lucia Racer You can find quite a few black mambas or king cobras all over the world. The world is full of all kinds of boa constrictors and pythons, but the San Lucia Racer is extremely rare. So much so, in fact, they're considered the rarest snakes on the planet. In the wild, there are less than 20 individuals. The name suggests that these snakes are found in San Lucia, an island state located in the Caribbean Sea. These reptiles live in the forests and bushes at an altitude of about one kilometer above sea level. The San Lucia racers are not very large. They reach a length of just over 120 centimeters. The coloration is variable. Some individuals have a broad brown stripe running along the upper part of the body while other individuals have a brown stripe alternating with yellow spots. These rare reptiles feed on small rodents, lizards, and frogs. At this point, scientists are interested in finding the best way to conserve the San Lucia racers. They are making various attempts to conserve the species and are trying different techniques, but so far they have had little success. It is to be hoped that they will succeed in preserving this interesting species. Do you remember the dodo birds? They lived peacefully in Mauritius until the Dutch sailors arrived there, and in just a few decades the population was completely wiped out, as a result of which the bird was declared extinct. As practice shows, Mauritius is not the best place for many animals in general. For example, the round island boa, which used to inhabit Mauritius, became completely extinct there due to predation by rats that came to the islands with the travelers. It's now common on Round Island, north of Mauritius in the Indian Ocean. At the moment, this boa is one of the rarest reptiles in the entire world, but fortunately, it's not as bad as it could be. Well, back in the 1980s, the population was barely 100 individuals. Now, thanks to efforts to protect the species, it's increased to about 1,000. Clearing Round Island of rabbits and ghosts and planting of endemic vegetation has done its job. It's quite possible that soon this snake will not be so rare. Madagascar Blind Snake There are also problems in neighboring Madagascar. For example, there's the Madagascar Blind Snake, which is now in a very difficult situation. Yes, it really is a snake, although it looks more like a worm, but only if worms are a dime a dozen. It's very hard to find the snake. The unique snake with a length of about 25 centimeters was discovered in 1905. For more than 100 years, it remained known to biologists only by a single individual. New data on the snake was only obtained in the 21st century. The Madagascar blind snake lives on a small piece of land in the northeast of the country. Despite its harmless appearance and blindness, this reptile is a predator. It hunts ants and termites in the sand. It's possible that ants and termites will soon be able to breathe easy. Every year there are fewer and fewer of these snakes, and the reason for that is human activity. Unfortunately, humans are responsible for the extermination and extinction of many animals. Among them, there is one of the most amazing and rare turtles on the planet, which boasts a beautiful mohawk on its head. Stay tuned to see this endangered turtle as well as other world's rarest reptiles that will amaze you. Matagua Valley Beaded Lizard If you go to Guatemala, you might encounter the Matagua Valley Beaded Lizard, but you will be incredibly lucky if you manage to do so because this animal is considered the rarest lizard in the world at the moment. It is directly threatened with extinction. Now there are less than 200 individuals of this species on the planet. The lizard is found only in one place on the planet, in the Matagua Valley in Guatemala. For this reason, it got its name. The species was first discovered only in the 1980s, but locals have known this lizard for quite some time. After observing the Matagua Valley beaded lizard, scientists came to the conclusion that its main food is bird eggs. This reptile also feeds on beetles and crickets. Gharial One of the rarest crocodiles on the planet is the gharial. It is the only modern species in the Gavalis genus. It inhabits the territory of Hindustan. By the way, the name gharial literally means crocodile in Hindi. In general, the locals didn't spend much time creating the name for the toothy creature. At the moment, the gharial is in danger of extinction. According to estimates in 2017, the world population of this species counts no more than 900 individuals, which means that now the situation may be even worse. 
Unfortunately, human activity is the cause of the situation. Since the last century, people have been actively reducing the habitats suitable for gharials, catching too many fish, which gharials feed on, and also exterminating these crocodiles for medical purposes. Males, for example, were often hunted for the outgrowth on their nose, which are considered aphrodisiacs. It's a shame that this is the way things turned out. After all, unlike most crocodiles, the gharial is not dangerous. According to local residents, which is confirmed by scientists, these reptiles pose no threat. Plus, they look very unusual. Not every crocodile's jaw looks like a saw or razor. It'd be a pity if these reptiles went extinct. Cantor's Giant Softshell Turtle The Cantor's Giant Softshell Turtle, also called the Asian Giant Softshell Turtle, is one of the largest softshell turtles and freshwater turtles in general. It can be as long as 2 meters and weigh up to 50 kilograms. The Cantor's Giant Softshell Turtle is not only one of the largest but also one of the rarest turtles on the entire planet. Until recently, it was even considered an extinct species. After the turtle was last seen in Cambodia in 2013, scientists declared it extinct. But four years later, thanks to an examination of an area on the Mekong River in Cambodia, scientists found turtles along a short stretch of the river which was 48 kilometers long. First, a clutch of eggs was found, and then an adult female weighing 11 kilograms was found. It's not known exactly what became of its offspring, but it's likely that the turtles hatched. Either way, one clutch is clearly not enough to quickly restore the population, so it's possible that scientists will soon again recognize the Cantor's giant softshell turtle as an extinct species, this time definitively and irrevocably. <laughs> Mary River Turtle Another rare creature with a shell is the Mary River Turtle. It's so named because the species lives in the Mary River, which runs through southeastern Queensland, Australia. This reptile is a prime example of how quickly things can change. 50 to 60 years ago, these turtles were a big hit with pet stores, selling upwards of 15,000 individuals a year. This turtle looks cool. Not every turtle has such a cool green mohawk on its head. Unfortunately, these turtles can no longer be found in pet stores. Breeding them as pets is out of the question at the moment. Scientists are trying their best to preserve the species. Scientists believe that these reptiles are among those that have most threatened with extinction. According to one of the versions, the reason for the sharp decrease in the population was the increased demand for these turtles as pets. Madagascan Big-Headed Turtle Next up, another turtle, which also doesn't boast a large population. The Madagascan Big-Headed Turtle is endemic to Madagascar. It lives in the rivers and lakes of this country. Unlike the Cantor's giant softshell turtle, the Madagascan Big-Headed Turtle is not large, but at the same time it's not small. It reaches a length of about 50 centimeters and weighs 15 kilograms. These reptiles feed on amphibians, mollusks, and arthropods. Unfortunately, people are actively destroying the habitats of these turtles, eating these reptiles and taking them off the island to use them in traditional medicine in China and Southeast Asian countries. For this reason, there are fewer and fewer Madagascan big-headed turtles left each year. Now these reptiles are so rare that scientists consider them one of the most endangered species among all animals on the planet. Pinta Island Tortoise Some reptiles are simply considered rare and some even got listed in the Guinness Book of World Records due to their rarity. Under the rarest reptile in the world, the Guinness Book lists the Pinta Island Tortoise, or more specifically, one individual named Lonesome George. The Pinta Island Tortoise is a species of land turtle from Pinta Island in the Galapagos Islands. During the 19th and 20th centuries, the tortoises of this species were almost completely wiped out. Only Lonesome George remained, which became a very valuable discovery for scientists. Having found George, scientists began to carefully protect it as well as try to obtain offspring from it. To this end, two females were brought to Lonesome George's home from the island of Española, which were genetically closest to the Pinta Island tortoises. But attempts failed and Lonesome George passed away in 2012 at more than 100 years old. After his death, many scientists recognized the Pinta Island tortoise as an extinct species, but recently there was a hope. In 2020, an expedition discovered a young female hybrid turtle on Isabella Island which DNA was as similar as possible to that of the Pinta Island tortoise. As it turned out, the female is a direct descendant of an unknown purebred of the species. Who knows? Perhaps thanks to it, scientists will be able to recover the species.
As for now, this very female can be called the rarest reptile on the planet. But an animal doesn't have to be of a rare species or breed to be considered unique. Some animals hold this title because of their coloring characteristics. What about the black penguin, or a chicken with black meat, or a raven black horse? Let's take a look at these and other blackest animals in the world. Horse The Frisian horse breed is known as the Black Gold of Holland. They're amazing dark horses, among which you can find incredibly beautiful individuals. One of them is Frederick the Great. This horse of the Frisian breed is one of the blackest animals in the world, and among all the horses of the world, he's often recognized as the most beautiful. The fancy raven black horse got its name after the Prussian king of the 18th century, Frederick the Great, whose horse had the same beautiful mane and a blackest pitch color. As the owner of the horse said, the beautiful appearance of Frederick corresponds to his character. He's a very gentle horse. He's also photogenic. Photo shoots with his participation cause delight. Everyone who's ever seen this horse notes that he has an amazingly harmonious appearance, an ideal muscular structure, a stunningly beautiful long mane, and a coal black mast. Not surprisingly, he has a second unofficial name, Black Beauty. Black Wolf Wolves are different. Black, white, red. Literally. For example, you have definitely heard about the white Alaskan tundra wolf. Surely you've seen the red mountain wolf at least once in your life. But have you ever seen a coal black wolf? It's considered one of the rarest in the whole dog's family. To capture it, you have to set trap cameras, or photographers have to track this beauty for a long time. Usually, black individuals are members of a subspecies called the interior Alaskan wolf. This is a subspecies of the common gray wolf that lives in the United States and Canada. Unlike the common wolf, the interior Alaskan wolf is more often black in color, but only a few individuals can boast a charcoal color. Because of this unusual coloring, these creatures look more like large, sharp-eared dogs than wild wolves. Black Penguin Everyone knows what emperor penguins look like. Their head and hindquarters are black, but their belly's white. All the more amazing is this incredible black individual. It seems as if this penguin has fallen into a coal pit or a vat of oil, but no, it's so by nature. Scientists believe that this penguin may be the only one in the entire world. It lives in the South Atlantic in a colony of several thousand of its normal congeners and, according to eyewitnesses, differs little from them in behavior. But why is it black? Scientists believe such an extravagant coloration is caused by a type of mutation called melanism, which is essentially the opposite of albinism, meaning melanistic animals are all black or almost all black. Statistically, in penguins, melanism occurs in 1 in 250,000 individuals, but very few of them are completely black, like this amazing creature from the South Atlantic. And a little more about birds. How do you imagine a flamingo? The image of a graceful pink-colored bird probably pops in your head, right? What would you say about such an incredible individual? This black flamingo is one of the most unique birds in the entire world. The individual was first discovered in Israel several years ago, but subsequently the black flamingo has been seen several times in Cyprus. Scientists believe that it was the same bird. Moreover, in their opinion, it's the only such bird on the planet. So, why is the plumage of this bird so unusual in color? Experts believe that the black color of the flamingo is the result of the same melanism. The black coloration, determined by melanin pigments, appeared in the flamingo as a result of a genetic disease, which is considered a form of adaptation to environmental change. This change may later become a favorable sign of natural selection if it turns out that darker individuals are more viable than lighter ones. Crested Black Macaque In the northeast of the Indonesian island of Sulawesi, as well as on the small neighboring islands, you can come across the blackest primate in the world. The name suits the macaque perfectly because it seems that this animal is 100% black. And it almost is, except for a few hairs on the shoulders. The color of the crested black macaque fur is completely black. These animals live in the humid jungle, where they're active during the day. In daylight, the black macaque searches for food, and at night, it sleeps in the trees. These creatures love humans and do not mind interacting with them. 
For example, in 2011, the Black Monkeys took over a British photographer's camera and took several selfies. It got so far that the macaques were recognized as the rights holder of the pictures. Unfortunately, very soon these animals may be gone. The monkeys are hunted, on the one hand, because of their devastating raids on plantations and fields, and on the other hand, because of their meat, which is considered a delicacy. The logging of the humid jungle poses an additional problem. As a result, the crested black macaque is on the verge of extinction. Snake What is the most famous black snake on the planet? Maybe a black mamba? It's hard to argue with that, but the black mamba itself is not actually black. The general color of the snake varies from dark olive to grayish brown, and it got its name because of the black coloring of the inner cavity of its mouth, similar to ink. But the indigo snake is all black. This representative of the colubrids family is one of the darkest creatures in the world. The eastern indigo snake is considered especially black. In addition, it's also very rare. In the wild, it's been found only a few times in more than 60 years. Because of this, the reptile was long even considered extinct in the wild. At the same time, the indigo snake is very popular in captivity. In America, many people keep it as a pet. Owners say that it's the best pet snake imaginable. Bird of Paradise Many of the animals I've already shown you could claim the title of the blackest creature on the planet. But a few years ago, that title was occupied by the Bird of Paradise. I think it should be called the Bird of Hell because its coloration is far from gracious. Scientists have come to the conclusion that the feathers of the male Bird of Paradise can absorb up to 99.95% of light. That makes this bird the darkest creature in the world in the literal sense. According to biologists, this feature of birds of paradise is due to the fact that the feathers of males of this species consist of a huge number of small, hollow hairs. Once on the surface of the feathers, the light is repeatedly scattered inside these hollows. This effect is known in physics as structural absorption, and it's fundamentally different from the pigmentation of most animals. In addition to their coloration, male birds of paradise are also distinguished by their dancing abilities. With their lively dances, they can conquer the heart of their future mate. Ayam Samani Next up is an unusual animal, because it can be called the leader in two categories, the blackest and most expensive chicken in the world. The Ayam Samani is a very rare ornamental chicken breed from Indonesia. What sets the Ayam Samani apart from typical chickens is the incredible coloration associated with a mutation. It causes an abnormal increase in the number of melanocytes. Simply put, this chicken is very black. So much so that it's black not only on the outside but also on the inside. However, the blood and eggshells of the Ayam Samani are the same color as those of normal chicken breeds. This is not the only interesting thing. The Ayam Samani is also an extremely expensive chicken and a complete delicacy. If the usual chicken is a budget product, which many people can afford, then the Ayam Samani is affordable only for the richest people, because one such chicken can cost up to $2,500. Actually, the price can be even higher. Gourmets say that the Ayam Samani meat is very tasty and nutritious. But that's not all. The Ayam Samani is also a very important and valuable chicken for Indonesians. They believe in the mystical and magical healing properties of the blood of this breed and widely use expensive black chickens as sacrificial animals. All in all, it's not a chicken, but a real treasure. The Ayam Samani, by the way, is also a very small breed of chickens. There are not so many of these black birds left. But in this respect, the melanistic deer is far more unique. These black creatures have been filmed only a few times and have been found in different parts of Earth, from China to the USA. According to experts, melanistic deer are the rarest in the world. For example, albino deer with all-white coloration are more common, although they're also few in number. Black Squirrel And finally, let's talk about squirrels a little bit. Usually, we're used to seeing these creatures as red, dark brown, or gray. So, black squirrels can easily confuse you. Like many other black animals, these creatures look as if they're dirty. But in fact, everything is more than natural because these rodents are melanistic. In fact, in this case, it's the exact same as with other melanistic animals. Nowadays, black squirrels are mainly found in the United States and Canada, but they can also be seen in other places, in Great Britain or Siberia, for example. Black Lion 
Like some other feline species, lions have individuals with a completely white coat. This is quite rare among lions, but it is 100% confirmed. Nevertheless, there is also information about black lions, which are called even more rare and unique animals. It's believed that these lions have a genetic mutation called melanism. The same is observed, for example, in black panthers, which are in fact not a separate animal species, but melanistic leopards or jaguars. As proof of the existence of black lions, the authors attach various photographs taken both in zoos and in the wild. At present, photographs of black lions are the only proof of their existence. Nevertheless, we should not completely rule out the possibility of their existence. Despite the fact that scientists have never seen black lions in the wild, they admit the possibility that they do exist. In their opinion, there could be several individuals of melanistic lions in nature. And if it's confirmed, then these lions will officially become the rarest and the most unique, not only at present, but also in the whole history. What do you think? Do you think black lions exist in the wild? And if so, where should we look for them? Share your thoughts in the comments and keep watching because there are some very unusual, unique and rare kings of the jungle further in the episode. White Lion Unlike black lions, white lions are not to be doubted. As I've already said, white lions do occur among lions. Interestingly, until relatively recently, almost no one believed in their existence. Now the situation with black lions is roughly the same. Who knows, maybe it'll change soon. But let's get back to the white lions. Earlier, they were some kind of mythical characters, or people believed that white lions existed in ancient times but then became extinct. Only in 1938 they were first seen in the wild, and in 1975, three fascinating silvery white lion cubs were discovered in the Timbavati Private Nature Reserve in South Africa. So all the myths were shattered. Interestingly, the white lions are not at all albinos, as might seem at first sight. Their unique coloration is due to a rare color mutation, leucism. As a rule, white lions live in family packs, prides. Females are mainly engaged in raising their young and hunting. Males protect their territory and the pride. Visible white color does not particularly hinder the white lions to live and hunt. Animals hunt collectively, clearly distributing roles. Lionesses play the decisive role, as they are faster and more agile. Lions, on the other hand, frighten the prey with a threatening roar. In fact, the usual African lions hunt in a similar way. Currently, white lions are distributed throughout South Africa and are also kept in some zoos around the world. You can even buy a white lion, but it's not easy to do. Because of the uniqueness of the animal, as well as its rarity and small number, the cost per lion can reach $140,000 to $150,000. Ishasha Lion Lions are known for living in prides, for being known as kings of the jungle, and for being excellent hunters. But lions are not good at everything. For example, they are quite bad at climbing trees, unlike many other big cats. Lions have powerful limbs and a stiff back. Because of this, they are not as vertically agile as, for example, tigers. All the more surprising are the lions from the Ashasha region of Africa's Uganda. Ashasha lions differ from their usual main relatives in that they are excellent tree climbers. You could say it is their peculiar hobby. If an ordinary African lion will climb a tree only in case of an urgent need, the Ashasha lion can jump up a tree just for fun. Ashasha lions make their homes on the trees, where they also sleep and escape the scorching African sun. Scientists still don't know why lions from this region are so fond of trees. According to one version, it's because of the scorching heat from which it's easier to hide in the tree crowns. Another version is that it's the tsetse flies which bite the lions near the ground. There's another version according to which Ashasha lions climb the trees for no reason at all. Not many people know, but lions are not only found in Africa. In the wild, they can also be found in Asia. In fact, local lions are called Asiatic lions. This is a subspecies of the lion that lives in South Asia. Formerly, they were distributed throughout South and Central Asia, from the Middle East and Transcaucasia to India, but now they live only in the reserve of the Indian state of Gujarat, where less than 400 individuals remain. The Asiatic lion has a stocky body, which gives the misleading impression that it is much smaller than the African lion. The Asiatic lion is indeed smaller, but not by much. Its mass can be up to 485 pounds, and the record length of the Asiatic lion was almost 10 feet. 
These rare and endangered lions also differ from their African relatives in their lifestyle. Asiatic lions live not in huge pride groups with dozens of individuals, but in small groups. As a rule, the group consists of the alpha male, two to three females, and cubs. It's believed that this is due to the fact that the Asiatic lion has a smaller food supply and does not have to hunt as large game as its African relatives. Barbary Lion While the Asiatic lion is only on the verge of extinction, the Barbary lion has long since crossed that verge. The last Barbary lion living at large was shot in 1922. Why then is it in this episode? The fact is that some of the individuals currently living in captivity are descended from extinct Barbary lions. There are probably no purebred representatives of the subspecies left, but there are those in which the blood of Barbary lions still prevails. You can tell by their appearance that they're different from their normal relatives. The Barbary lion has coarser features and thicker and darker mane and a coarser coat. In addition, Barbary lions are slightly larger and heavier than modern lions. By the way, it's interesting that Barbary lions were used by the famous zoologist Carl Linnaeus to describe and classify lions. Therefore, we owe the entire detailed classification of lions to these extinct giants, which descendants are still preserved on our planet. Northern Lion Very soon, the Northern Lion, also called Panthera leo leo, may follow Barbary lions. It's a rare subspecies of the lion that lives in West Africa and is threatened with complete extinction. About 20 years ago, the population of Northern Lions totaled 450 to 1,300 individuals. But now, according to scientists, less than 300 of these big cats remain in the wild. Man has made a negative contribution to the evolution of these lions. People have been ruthlessly exterminating northern lions throughout the ages, reducing the population. As for the predators themselves, they live in smaller prides than other African subspecies. Northern lions are inferior in size to their common African relatives. They also differ from them externally. For example, the manes of male northern lions are usually small. In some lions, they're weakly expressed, and in some male northern lions, there's no mane at all. But still, in terms of mane, the most interesting lion is the Ethiopian lion, which lives on the opposite side of Africa, in the east. These lions are difficult to confuse with others because they have a pronounced black mane. Because of this, Ethiopian lions are also called dark-maned lions. At the beginning, the Ethiopian lion was considered a subspecies of the East African lion, but it was classified as a separate subspecies after genetic and phenotypic analysis was carried out in the Addis Ababa Zoo in the capital of Ethiopia. As is the case with many other lions from this episode, the situation with the Ethiopian predators leaves much to be desired. Five years ago, there were only 200 to 300 individuals in the wild, which means there may be far fewer nowadays. Southern Lion This lion, on the other hand, is doing quite well. Scientists believe that this subspecies of the lion is least threatened with extinction. But considering that the African lion is, in general, considered a vulnerable species, even the southern lion can be called rare. They're found in Southwest Africa, Namibia, Angola, the Democratic Republic of Congo, Western Zambia, Western Zimbabwe, and Northern Botswana. There are many places to see the lion, aren't there? And, as you can see it with ease, I mean, the southern lion is noticeable because it's very large. These creatures can reach 10 feet in length and weigh more than 727 pounds, although the average individual is smaller. Like northern big cats, southern lions usually do not have a very developed and thick mane, which allows scientists to easily distinguish this lion subspecies from many others. Many animals in our episode are on the verge of extinction. But some, on the contrary, were considered extinct for many years until they were rediscovered in the wild. The return of animals from the other world is further in this compilation. Chicoan Peccary The species called the Chicoan Peccary was first scientifically described in 1930. By nature, it was one of the largest mammals in South America, its closest relative being the wild hog. Surprisingly, the description of the species was based on fossilized remains. It never occurred to anyone that a huge ancient boar could still roam the earth. However, in 1974, an Argentinian zoologist named Raf Wadzel presented the world a real sensation, a living peccary. 
As it turned out, it would be really hard to find an individual of this species by accident. Chacoan peccaries are nicknamed pigs from green hell because of their wild, undiscovered habitats. <laughs> These animals prefer arid and wild habitats untouched by man. To live in such environments, they've acquired unique characteristics, such as well-developed sinuses, which help them survive in dry, dusty conditions. Their legs are fairly short, allowing the animals to maneuver among thorny plants. Thus, the Chacoan peccary is one of the last large mammals to be discovered. Today, there are around 3,000 surviving individuals of the species. Colacanth Scientifically speaking, the Colacanth genus of fish became extinct in the late Jurassic, about 145 million years ago. No one ever thought to look for them in the ocean, and all descriptions for school atlases were based on fossils. However, in 1938, the curator of a maritime museum in South Africa and local fishermen caught a previously unseen large and aggressive fish in the Indian Ocean. The curious find was taken to the East London Museum, where it was spotted by research assistant Miss Latimer. In order to not let the valuable individual go to waste, she decided to stuff it since the fish could not be kept alive before the arrival of the scientists. Scientists who visited the museum carefully examined the find and confirmed that this was indeed the colacanth, one of the oldest fish on the planet. The new member of the genus was named Letamaria after the museum worker who preserved it for science. Hispaniolian Solenodon Despite its funny appearance and tiny size, this mammal is a close relative of the common shrew. It inhabited the planet as early as 60 million years ago. Today, however, the habitat of this species has significantly shrunk. They are now found only in Cuba, Haiti, and the Dominican Republic. For a long time, nobody even thought of the possibility of survival of the Hispaniolian Solandon. The sensation in the scientific community occurred thanks to the years-long work of a Dominican zoologist. The official recognition of the species as living took place relatively recently. A surprising fact, Hispaniolian Solenodons are one of the few venomous mammals. On the inner side of the lower incisors of these animals, there's a deep slit, to which the duct of the gland that secretes the venomous secret approaches. Because of this feature, these animals have received the scientific name of their family and genus. The venom of Hispaniolian Solenodons is not lethal to humans, but it is destructive to invertebrates and small vertebrates that serve as food. The mammalian venom can kill a chicken and even the Hispaniolian Solenodon itself since these animals are not immune to their own weapons. There have been known cases where Hispaniolian Solenodons have been killed during skirmishes among themselves, even with minor wounds. Gilbert's Patoru Gilbert's Patoru also known as a Nagil cat, does not differ much from an ordinary rodent externally. At dusk, an ordinary person can hardly distinguish it from a rat. However, this is not just a rat, but an extremely rare rodent and one of the endangered mammal species. Gilbert's Patoro was first discovered in 1840 by a naturalist named John Gilbert. Patoros were once very common in Australia, but local farmers considered them a serious threat to their crops. Just 38 years after its discovery, the species had disappeared as a result of mass eradication and poisoning, and was considered extinct, until it was rediscovered in 1994. It happened in one of Western Australia's reserves. According to scientists, the current estimated population of the species is only 70 individuals. However, this can already be considered a small victory. Thanks to conservation efforts, the original wild population was able to grow. Langomera Giant Lizard Langomera giant lizards are one of the main attractions of the Canary Islands. A few years ago, they were considered extinct, which isn't surprising, because the existing descriptions of the species were made on the basis of fossils found. Plus, the size of these lizards was much larger than that of most modern species. They could exceed one meter in length. It would seem impossible not to notice such a giant in the wild, but facts tell the opposite. The species was rediscovered in 1999 virtually by accident. It was discovered by a group of zoologists who went to La Gomera to check the reports of local residents about strange, large lizards settled on the island. So it turned out that the newcomers to the island, these lizards, have actually inhabited it longer than anyone else. Today the conservation program is working surprisingly well. There are already more than 400 individuals of the species in captivity, 
and another 300 individuals, according to scientists, can live in the wild in different regions of the Canary Islands. It seems that scientists are willing to try much harder for lizards than for rodents, but there are much more interesting animals once thought to be extinct. Let's move on. Further, there are many shocking discoveries. Bermuda Petrel For scientists, the Bermuda Petrel has already become a symbol of hope for the protection of nature. This nocturnal nesting seabird is a national bird of Bermuda. The fantastic coming back to life of this petrel, which had been thought extinct for several hundred years, has thrilled many scientists and conservationists. When Columbus's ship passed near Bermuda in 1492, at least half a million Bermuda petrels were nesting on the islands. So what happened? The people. With their arrival, the habitats suitable for these birds were reduced. The arrival of many new predators, including domestic cats and dogs, also played an important role. Bermuda petrels were forced to settle further and further away from their usual habitats, choosing remote cliffs or even moving to remote desert islands. All of this led to the fact that people gradually stopped seeing them altogether. Of course, the species was thought to be extinct. But in 1951, they were seen again. Unfortunately, the population of these beautiful birds declined to a critical level. In the middle of the last century, only a few dozen individuals of the species were found. These days, the population has grown only slightly. Now, scientists count a few hundred individuals. Not many, but there is hope. Living Mammoths Many of you are probably wondering if a peculiar resurrection could have occurred with Bermuda petrels, do scientists have a chance to rediscover mammoths? Well, the chances of such a rediscovering do exist. Scientists know that one of the earliest and most ancient documented sightings of a living mammoth by man took place in 579 AD. In that year, a strange beast was allegedly caught by hunters in Yangzhou, China, which they called Dezhang. That translates as big elephant. This creature was described as a really gigantic and stocky elephant with long black hair. It was kept in captivity for some time, but that's where the story ends and nothing more is known about it. In the early 19th century, several reports of sightings of mammoths came from British Columbia. Local Indians said that the huge, hairy creatures on four legs roamed the forest and never lay down on the ground. They leant their backs on the thick trees to sleep. In 1811, explorer David Thompson discovered elephant-like tracks in the Canadian forest. He thought they might have been left by a young mammoth, but acknowledged that other than the stories of hunters and these footprints, he found no real evidence of mammoths. In the early and mid-20th century, reports of mammoth sightings never ceased. The animals allegedly were found in the United States, in Canada, and in Siberia. It's a pity that none of the eyewitnesses managed to provide scientists with convincing evidence of encounters. However, perhaps everything is yet to come. Perhaps mammoths would never have become extinct if they had such litter as that of the elephant from Kenya Nature Reserve, because recently it gave birth to twins. Let's take a look at other rare and unique births in the animal world. Lots of Twins Pregnancy in horses lasts about 11 months. Usually, the mare gives birth to one or less often two foals. It's even rarer for a horse to give birth to twins, but one prolific mare from England has done something even rarer. At the beginning of 2020, Tanya McKee from Devon County got a surprise from a 19-year-old mare named Destiny who gave birth to twins. Destiny had given birth to twins 18 months earlier. This was one of the rarest births in history. Unlike their predecessors, the new twins were not identical, but despite this, two twins in a row is a one-in-a-million chance, as Tanya herself said. Two extreme pregnancies in a row had no effect on the offspring. Like the previous twins, the new twins were born healthy. The stallions are strong, as Tanya noted, doing amazingly well. What could be more unusual than two twins in a row? How about a mutant baby? In general, such cases are not unique in the animal world, but they do not occur very often. One such case occurred several years ago in the Philippine province of Sultan Kudarat where a mutant baby goat was born to Josephine Repik's family. Josephine's goat had to undergo a cesarean section. During the artificial delivery, those present were surprised and frightened when the second goat kid was born. He looked like a man, a piglet, a goat, and some kind of sea animal all at the same time. Unfortunately, as is often the case with mutants, the unusual baby goat passed away. 
as did his mother. Even before that, and for some time after his passing, locals came to Josephine's house. They wanted to see the mutant, who they said was cursed. But there really was no curse. Scientists believe that the fetus underwent a genetic mutation in the womb. The goat may have contracted Rift Valley Fever, which is carried by mosquitoes, resulting in the abnormality. Humanoid Baby Goat This was not the only such case. Late last year, the Indian state of Assam was shaken by unusual news. 46-year-old Shankar Das's family had a baby goat with a humanoid face. Whether it was a coincidence or not, as in the case of the Filipino family, the mutant was the second kid who the goat gave birth to. The kid's muzzle resembled a human baby with two limbs. The face, eyes, nose, and mouth were all similar to a child's facial features. Soon after the birth, the villagers flocked to the goat owner's house to see the creepy baby, but the show didn't last long. The mutant didn't live long and died shortly after birth. Rift Valley fever probably played a role here again. However, there could have been other causes that led to the genetic mutation. Either way, the locals heaved a sigh of relief when the mutant passed away. For in India, the birth of a mutant animal or child is considered a bad omen. Chihuahua Record I think everyone knows what the Chihuahua is. I'm sure you immediately had an association with the society women who carry these tiny dogs in a small bag. This isn't surprising because the Chihuahua is a fancy breed, which moreover is the smallest in the world. And how many puppies do you think can fit in such a little dog? Maybe a couple? Three? Or as many as five? Kick it up a notch. In March 2018, an incredible event happened in the state of Kansas. A Chihuahua with the funny name Lol gave birth to 11 puppies. Veterinarians and volunteers were expecting a large litter, judging by the female's giant belly, but no one expected the litter to be a record. The birth itself was very difficult. Lol gave birth all night but she still did it perfectly. Surprisingly, all 11 puppies were healthy and strong, which can be regarded as a real miracle. The Green Baby The female three-year-old bulldog named Freya was not far behind her tiny congener in terms of fertility. At the beginning of this year, she surprised everyone just as much. Freya's owners, Trevor and Audra Mosher, thought the labor of their three-year-old bulldog was over after she gave birth to seven puppies. However, Freya then continued to give birth. The eighth puppy was born in a black pouch that contrasted with the clear pouches of its common siblings. When the puppy was dried, it turned out to be green. Naturally, the Moshers thought there was something wrong with the dog, but it soon turned out that there was nothing wrong with him. It's just that the puppy was born with a very rare phenomenon that's occurred only a few times in history. The green color is explained by the fact that the light-colored puppy came into contact with green bile pigments while in Freya's womb. A similar thing had happened the year before. Then another green puppy was caught on camera in Georgia. Along with him, seven more puppies were born. The unique baby got the appropriate name Grinch. What would you call a green puppy? Brilliant green? Wasabi? Leaf? Anyway, share your ideas in the comments. And stay tuned to see a mutant calf, a two-faced cat, and unusual birds of an elephant and a polar bear. Here comes the promised mutant calf. Its birth at a farm in northern Macedonia came as a shock and surprise to everyone. After all, the cow gave birth to a calf with two heads and four eyes. As is the case in Siamese twins, the calves were joined by two skulls. They have two pairs of eyes and two mouths, but only one pair of ears. The veterinarian who examined the unusual mutant stated that all the biological parameters and vital parameters of the ungulate are normal. For example, when it absorbs mother's milk with one mouth, the other mouth simultaneously reproduces the same movements. It happens very rarely. At the same time, there's not much reason to rejoice. The chances of survival of such an unusual calf are extremely low. So it's probably no longer alive. How about an even more unusual mutant? On a farm in New Zealand, the real Shiva was born. The mutant calf has eight legs, two pairs of ears, and two torsos but only one head. A farmer named Lael Davy was shocked to see that his cow had given birth to a mutant. For Lael himself was certain that the cow was giving birth to twins when he delivered her baby. They, by the way, were very heavy, which is not surprising in the case of such a mutant. Scientists have been able to find an explanation for this rare form of mutation. It's possible that they'll not find one, because such creatures rarely live long enough for researchers to have enough time to study them. 
two-faced cat. Two-faced cats come in many forms. There is, for example, Venus. It's hard not to call her two-faced because the unique cat is Chimera. Her muzzle is clearly divided into two completely different halves and her eyes are of different colors. This happens when two or more genetic traits are combined in one body. And there's a two-faced Fluffy. He was born to a very ordinary cat on a farm in Oregon a few years ago. The two-headed cat has two pairs of eyes, two mouths, one brain, and one body. Scientists call this unusual phenomenon a Janus cat, after the two-faced god from Roman mythology. Usually, such cats do not live longer than one day, but this beauty was an exception to the rule. His health is perfect. Farm owner B.J. King takes care of this unique individual with his family, who quickly fell in love with the Janus cat. Twin Elephants A pregnancy of the African bush elephant lasts almost two years. This is the longest of all mammals. It takes 22 months for the female to carry its offspring, after which only one calf is born. Twins are born very rarely, and each time it's a big deal. For example, at the beginning of the year, this happened at the Kenyan Samburu National Reserve, unique twins with trunks were born. So that you understand how rare this phenomenon is, the last time such a case was recorded in 2006, and the last time the twin elephants didn't live long. Unfortunately, this is not uncommon in the elephant world, because females do not always have enough milk to feed two calves at once. Not everything goes smoothly with pregnancy in polar bears either. These northern predators are far from the most prolific creatures in the world. A female polar bear first bears its young at the age of four to eight years, gives birth once in two to three years, and has one to three cubs in its litter. The appearance of twins in polar bears is rare, but it's even rarer in captivity. Fortunately, thanks to cameras, we can see it with our own eyes. A few years ago, a female polar bear gave birth to two twins in the Dutch zoo called Derenjik. The polar bears carried the cubs for eight months and then kept them for another three months in an enclosed place, where they gained strength. After a long wait, the photographers and visitors to the zoo were finally able to see the unique couple of cubs with their mother. This case will surely go down in history. What do animals and robots have in common? At first glance, nothing. But you just haven't seen robotic animals, which can be not only cute, but also very useful. Let's learn about them. A chameleon robot Let's start with one of the most recent developments. Last year, researchers from South Korea created a chameleon robot. In fact, the device performs the same function as its living prototype. It changes color depending on its surroundings. To bring the idea of the chameleon robot to life, scientists created a special skin for it. Its top layer is filled with ink, which can change color when heated. Different amounts of heat cause structures of different sizes to form, so you can give them almost any color you want. The chameleon is also equipped with microchips that allow it to crawl forward. As it crawls forward, it changes color based on its surroundings. In this, it's helped by sensors on the lower part of the body, which recognize the color on the surface on which the robot is crawling. Such an unusual device could primarily be a breakthrough in the military industry. Chameleon robots can bring camouflage to a whole new level. However, they can also be used in other areas, for example, in art objects and design. Luna And here's an even newer model. It's not really a robot animal. Rather, Luna is a robot that can replace pets. Luna was introduced in September of this year. Luna immediately struck everyone with its charm and cute appearance. This little robot consists of two platforms, four wheels and a head with ears. Also, Luna is endowed with artificial intelligence. Using built-in sensors, it can identify the owner's faces, follow the movements of the body and surroundings. In fact, it's capable of a lot of things. It can move around sweetly, dance, pose for a photo, repeat its owner's words, sneeze, scratch, get angry, smile, play with a ball, move its ears, and more. If the baby sees that the owner is sad, it'll try its best to cheer them up. All in all, this is a truly unique robot, which will go on sale next year. By the way, did Luna remind you of the equally cute robot Wally from the animated movie of the same name? Let's get back to specific animals. Next, we have Metabird, the biomimetic drone from the Bionic Bird Company. What does biomimetic mean? It means imitating, copying, or learning from nature. 
This is the essence of this feathered robot because from afar it's impossible to distinguish it from real birds. It flies just like pigeons, nightingales, eagles, and so on. The flight of the iron bird is so similar to the flight of a real bird that sometimes even birds of prey show interest in the drone. The drone weighs less than 10 grams and has no propellers, making it maneuverable and safe for others. The device is equipped with flexible wings made of carbon fiber and liquid crystal polymers, and the body itself is made of durable foam plastic, so MetaBird is not afraid of falling. You can control the drone from your smartphone via an app, and it's easy. Just tilt your phone to the right or left. Robot Snake It's hard to imagine what a robotic snake would be good for. Could it be another pet or something like that? Actually, no. The Ulami robotic snake, created by a Norwegian company, was designed for important tasks and purposes. This robot works underwater. The iron snake performs a useful function by inspecting and repairing various deep sea infrastructures. The robot was created by Norwegians as a challenge to clumsy, slow, and expensive underwater devices. Ulami is a real snake. Like a live, nimble reptile, the robot moves quickly underwater and safely reaches places where ordinary deep-sea apparatus can never reach. The device works from an external power source via cable, but fully autonomous snake robots are already being developed and gradually introduced. Robot Cockroach Okay, everything is clear with the robotic snake, but what does that have to do with cockroaches? Who would think of creating a robotic cockroach? Aren't nasty live cockroaches enough? Actually, the idea is very original and interesting. A prototype robot called Cram, which looks like a cockroach, was developed by researchers at the University of California, Berkeley. They looked at the movements of insects and their immunity to damage and endowed robots with the same qualities. Cram has an exoskeleton consisting of strong plates and a soft shell, which allows it to change its shape and penetrate into very narrow crevices. All this is done in order to use robotic cockroaches in rescue operations. These babies can squeeze into the narrowest crevices and find a person under debris caused by tornadoes, earthquakes, and explosions. By the way, Cram is not the only cockroach in the world of robots. There's also Velociroach, which has a great speed, is capable of carrying small loads and overcoming obstacles. Everything's fair here. Robot Seal It's hard to find cuter robots than all those cats and dogs, but how about this amazing seal? Its name is Paro, and it's a baby harp seal with a bunch of wires and microchips. This cutie is originally from Japan. There's a reason why Paro is so cute. This robot is therapeutic and is meant to have a calming effect. Paro has sensors for sound, light, temperature, position, and tactile sensors. Paro can move its tail and flippers, open its eyes when stroked, and mimic the sounds of a real baby seal. It responds to words its owner often uses and can express such emotions as surprise, happiness, and anger. Such a wide range of qualities and abilities of the robot make it a great therapist and assistant. Japanese researchers found that elderly people with dementia showed more positive emotions and laughed more often when interacting with this robotic animal than with a simple plush toy. Paro elicits positive emotional reactions from patients in hospitals and nursing homes. And in the future, it aims to completely replace the cats and dogs used as pets in hospitals and nursing homes. This is a robot salamander called Plurobot. Quite an unusual choice of an animal, isn't it? In essence, it's the same as an ordinary salamander, only robotized. Plurobot can walk on the ground, swim underwater, move between the two environments, and even perform more complex movements that a real salamander can't do. That's all great, but what's the purpose of such a robot? It may sound unusual, but using Plurobot, researchers plan to study the interaction between the spinal cord, the body, and the environment. Moreover, understanding the basics of this interaction will help scientists develop treatments and neuroprosthetics devices for patients with paraplegia and people with amputated limbs. It's amazing how a seemingly useless robot can help, and it can also be used in search and rescue operations like those robot cockroaches. Still remember them? Robot Kangaroo And finally, let's have a look at this funny robot. The kangaroo robot, created by German scientists, imitates the behavior of a real animal when it moves. 
it effectively uses the energy of one jump to make the next one. The mechanical beast is capable of jumping 31 inches in length and 16 inches in height. By and large, this robot is not very useful, it just jumps, but you have to agree, it looks cool. That's all guys. Which robot would you like to have? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching and see you later.